back. Today I'm going to be talking about eight things that Wilbur goes hate and will likely stress them out. So I know, I know, I have not been posting very much at all lately and I'm not dead, I'm not dead. I'm still alive, but I just have been super busy and have had some things come up with Mocha's tail again that just kind of kept me a little bit preoccupied and just, I don't know, I have had not had a whole lot of motivation to make videos. So I'm sorry about that and hopefully I'll be able to start making more videos again, but I'm really not sure because I, I don't know, I have a lot of stuff on my schedule right now, but I'm still alive guys, I've just been super busy and I'm really sorry about not posting, but please don't hate on me, that's my job, so just leave that to me. Without further ado, let's just get into this video. So a quick disclaimer like I do in a lot of my videos, this does not necessarily apply to all leopard geckos because like I've said multiple times in different videos, different leopard geckos tend to have different personalities and you can't necessarily say that every leopard gecko is going to hate these things and it kind of varies from leopard gecko to leopard gecko. So with that in mind, let's just get into this video. So the first one is being picked up from above. So this is kind of a general rule in handling that you should not pick your leopard gecko up from above without warning because that's kind of what predators do in the wild and it could make your leopard gecko think that they're being attacked and it's just not a good thing to do when you're handling your leopard gecko and it's probably going to stress them out kind of. So I would not recommend you pick your leopard gecko up from above and instead just pick them up from below or even better just let them crawl into your hand if they will do that so yeah i just wouldn't recommend you pick them up from above because it's going to make them think that you're a predator if you do it without warning the next one is rough handling so i've done some kind of videos on this before like how you should handle your leopard go but some of the main things that people sometimes do that leopard girls just don't like is like grabbing them, like putting your hand around them, like just touching them in places that they don't like being touched, or like just general being too jerky and quick and just not handling them very carefully. The best way to handle your leopard girl that does not normally stress them out you just let them walk from hand to hand like I'm doing with Izzy right now and not be over like jerky or crazy with handling them. Just be very careful and gentle. And one of the worst things you can do with handling leopard goo is put them on their back. I've seen pictures of this, like people putting their leopard goo on their back. And just please don't do this. It may look cute, but leopard girls are not supposed to be on their backs. It doesn't happen in the wild normally. And uh, it's just not very good for them to be on their backs. It can actually restrict their breathing sometimes. And it's just, a, it's just very uncomfortable for them to be on their backs. So please don't, even though it may look cute, it's not worth it. Your leopard girl is gonna be uncomfortable in this position. So please don't do it. Next one is really bright lights. So, well, it's okay to have a few sort of bright lights, like a halogen lamp or a UVB lamp over your leopard girl's enclosure. Some leopard girls are going to be kind of sensitive to really bright lights and might be kind of stressed out by them, and this might cause your leopard girl to be hiding a lot. So, I'd recommend you don't have a ton of really bright lights near in the room you're keeping them in. It's okay having them, like, a halogen or a UVB like I said, but try not to have too many really bright lights going on at once. And especially with albinos, they tend to be really sensitive to bright lights sometimes. And I would do your, what your leopard gecko is comfortable with. If you have an albino leopard gecko and they seem to be very sensitive to bright lights, then I would recommend you do not have lights over your leopard gecko's enclosure because it can kind of hurt their eyes sometimes, especially with albino leopard geckos, because that's they naturally seem to have more sensitive eyes than other leopard geckos. I also would make sure that you turn at least most of your lights off at night so that your leopard gecko will know that it's nighttime and their cycle won't be disrupted. 
So upper goes are crepuscular, so they're going to be around mostly at dawn and dusk. So I would try to make sure your lights are mostly off around this time because they don't tend to like super bright lights, especially when they're going to be out and about. Next one is wide open spaces. So don't get me wrong, it's okay to have a very big cage for your leopard go. You just have to have a lot of decorations in the cage and also small enclosed spaces for them to hide in. I've noticed with my leopard goes, they tend to like more enclosed, secluded hides. They tend to be in those more than the other hides. And if you have a very large cage with not very many places to hide or very large hides, your leopard go might feel kind of uncomfortable and maybe stressed. And this is why a lot of people say you shouldn't have very large cages, but it's actually really good to have a big cage as long as you have enough hides and decorations and small spaces for your leopard go to hide in during the day. Next one is lizard leashes. If you guys know what I'm talking about, they sometimes have like leashes for lizards for sale, some that will fit leopard goes. And I've even tried this on Mocha and she really hated it. It was so hard getting her into it and it really stressed her out. That was back when I was not well educated with this stuff and I would not do that to her again, but she really hated it. Some leopard goes might be sort of okay with it, but I'd say in general, most leopard goes aren't really gonna like being put on a leash. Leopard goes aren't supposed to be put on a leash. Like they're not dogs. You don't need to put them on a leash. They're completely fine without, and I just wouldn't recommend you do it. Please don't put your leopard go on a leash. They do not need to be on a leash. I know it might be fun, sort of, but it's not fun for your leopard go. Please just don't do this. So next one is loud noises. So a lot of leopard goes can be sensitive to loud noises, and if you have them in a very loud room, I'd recommend you put them in a different room because they can sometimes be sensitive to loud noises and it can kind of stress them out sometimes. I definitely do not play very loud music in your leopard goes room because that can stress them out. And yeah, during the day, they're probably going to be trying to sleep and they're not used to super loud noises in the wild. So yeah, I just wouldn't recommend you have them in a very loud area of your house. Next one is chemicals such as deodorizers, air fresheners, or unnatural disinfectants. So this is a little bit more of a like safety hazard for them over like something they hate. Since chemicals they are not exposed to normally in the wild and it can be very dangerous for them. Like if you have chemicals like air fresheners or deodorizers or unnatural disinfectants in the room with your leopard go, it can be pretty dangerous for them and also the odors from the chemicals could really stress them out. So I wouldn't recommend you use any of those in the room where your leopard goes are because most of them contain chemicals that could be harmful to your leopard go and could really stress them out, at least. So I'd recommend you use natural disinfectants to clean your leopard go's enclosure and stay away from anything that has chemicals that could harm your leopard go. The last one is high humidity and getting wet. So it's okay if you ha if the humidity in your leopard go's enclosure kind of goes up and down every once in a while because it does that in the wild, in the natural habitat. And there are times, even in arid climates, that the humidity gets sort of high. But if it, your humidity is consistently at a very high percentage, then it could be dangerous to your leopard go and stressful to your leopard go at least. High humidity can cause respiratory infections if it's constantly humid in the enclosure. And it can also be really stressful to your leopard go. If your humidity is constantly way too high, I would either get a dehumidifier or stop spraying your leopard goes enclosure if you do that or get a smaller water bowl there are different ways you can lower humidity but yeah it's not good for it to be super high consistently leopard goes also don't normally like getting very wet this is why i wouldn't really recommend you spray down your leopard goes enclosure because it's likely to get them sort of wet and they just 
don't like that. It's kind of stressful on them. And they don't normally get very wet in the wild. They would normally be hiding if it's raining. And it normally doesn't rain very often where they live. So, yeah. Also, please don't give your leopard go a bath or get them wet unless you're getting stuck shed off. And if you're getting stuck shed off, make sure it's shallow warm water. I wouldn't give them a bath if you're not getting stuck shit off because they don't normally have baths in the wild and they're not dogs, they don't need baths, so yeah, just don't do that unless you need to get stuck shit off, please. So yeah, I think that's about it guys and hopefully I'll be able to keep posting, but yeah, I'll see you in the next video and I hope you guys have a great day and if you aren't subscribed already, don't forget to push that button and push the bell to get notified when I post a new video and... Yeah, bye guys.